Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Delve. We now return to our conversation with Tyler Garner discussing Maiden Voyage and Kickstarter. Uh, please enjoy as we all go on a fun little voyage together. Yeah. When, when I'm playing, uh, you had mentioned that there are, are dice mechanics in it, and um, some, of that's, some of that's for contests, that sort of thing, like well, a roll, opposite roll. Or... The dice implementation is essentially for two different things. It's going to be for dueling, and it's going to be for your synchronicity rolls. Uh, just to give you an example, Mm-hmm. of when a dual situation would occur um i have a witch that's got a wand on her i'm attacking one of your witches uh mm-hmm. the only there's like two or three uh similarities between this and magic and almost every card game has this but when you use a card you tap the card yes. you turn it so when uh say i have a witch and i'm attacking you so when you attack or activate an idol or grimoire, or what? Anytime you activate any tool, you're gonna tap the witch that's attacking. Say your witch isn't tapped. If she was, she's just got to take the damage. But if she's okay. not tapped, she can attempt absorbency, and absorbency is where you pretty much are gonna attempt to disregard the damage. So <laughs> if you attempt absorbency, then we're gonna duel. If you lose, you take the damage, and my witch untaps. If I lose, you don't take the damage and your witch untaps. So that's one that's one situation where dice dueling occurs. When I'm uh, looking at the witch cards too, I'm noticing that they have two numbers. So the one on the left is is their health? Correct. Okay. What is the number on the right? That's the orb rating. That's that's the damage output of the witch gotcha. when she's equipped with a wand. Okay. This is kind of interesting, yeah, because I don't see a lot of like dice mechanics in collectible card games or anything like that, um, because it feels like in most games, when I use a card, I just use the card, and it just happens, and yay. Kind of giving that probability chance makes it feel like, you know, this is a much more personal thing. Especially because yeah. we're like, and we only have six characters that I really am am working with. I can't create like an army of slivers right. because I would, I would create an army of slivers. There is not a guarantee that my thing will work. <laughs> I might, it might not succeed. That was that the intent when you actually started. One of the main things, I mean, aside from like the witches being multi layered, which in terms of inspiration from tabletop rpg elements um aside from the witches themselves being multi-layered having multiple components that they're comprised of and then implementing the dice usage which is found in every single tabletop rpg that you'll ever play Mm -hmm. one thing that i really that i've always really liked about the tabletop rpg is how important it is to have imagination because mm. that's a very important thing. I mean, when you're playing one of the numerous other card games, you're almost never imagining things at the things actually happening. It's not really a experience in the sense that a lot of uh, tabletop RPGs are an experience. And and I really wanted to make that into a thing. I mean, I didn't want you to. If you're attacking an opposing witch, just looking at it like, oh, I just got to roll the dice. And if my number's higher, I'm good. Like, I want you to see this witch attacking that witch. And, you know, Mm. I want you to I want you to actually be visualizing, you know, everything that's happening and actually really put it within that realm of in the same realm that the way that tabletop RPG games were designed. Right. That was uh, really important because that was essentially one of the the main components that made it unique in, right as a collectible card game yeah yeah i like that i like that do uh do the individual characters have a, a backstory i feel i feel like you've done so much work on it that they might have uh, some history i actually wrote an entire biography on each witch mm. which i'm going to 
unveil at a later time. Sure. At one point, because like I said, this game's been being developed for this. This is the fourth year that it's been in the works. About a year ago, I wanted to really turn it into something that was just real life. But prior to that, I had an entire fantasy world set up that, you know, that they existed within and actually wrote uh, like if you're I don't know if you're familiar with Skyrim. Oh, yes. There's there's books in Skyrim. Mm-hmm. that uh that you can read i i wrote like 80 books oh my that, that were like the <laughs> length of that 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 associated with this world that yeah we live within and i i still have all of that oh I'm, wow uh, i'm just yeah. working on uh bringing that into this uh fully updated version that sure that I've uh, put together here. See, this this is what I'm thinking. Now I have another idea. And uh, feel free to take notes. This is fine. But since the characters are already sort of defined and have backstories and everything like that, and you were mentioning how you took some inspiration from, like, RPGs, it would be interesting if uh, if you actually sent them on, like, an RPG-style quest. Like, um, best example, you ever play Super Smash Brothers? Yes. Okay, so you know in Super Smash Bros. Yes, Alex, I'm using this as an example. (laughs) In Super Smash Bros., like, usually you just, you you have the two characters and they fight each other and then one gets blasted off the stage and and the match ends. But when they got into, like, Melee and those, there was the adventure mode where you would take, like, the character and they would go through, like, this series of challenges until they got to Master Hand at the end and then they had to defeat Master Hand. I feel right. like there's like an adventure quest that they could go on. Of course, that would be a lot of writing. But I definitely agree, and there's nothing wrong with a lot of writing. But yeah. basically, I'm saving all that stuff, uh, things related of that nature, for down the line. I'm really looking to convert this, in all honesty, to bring it into the mobile realm. Oh yes, and essentially, and bring it into a. Um, of course, a, a big part of that would be the story mode, and I'd like to have you know multiple stories written, the different campaigns essentially that you know you can choose your coven and you you know pretty much go through the one of the several campaigns that are available, and I mean right now it's that's in it's like extremely early stages, but that definitely is something that's going to exist down the line in terms of potentially making a game that's that's a, just a flat out tabletop rpg of this mm-hmm. game of course that's that's definitely been an idea that i've i've went over but that would just i feel like i would have to honestly making enough money where i didn't have to go to work work and completely you know (laughs) put my all my energy into that just because i mean most of this game was developed when i didn't really have too much to worry about but that's that's where i'm at now with it well i mean like if if dungeons and dragons can adopt like uh, a magic setting which they they just basically did uh i think that there's a lot of crossover possibility down the road just as a, a a thing for the future they they did right. do that. I'm not making that up. <laughs> they they have they have a guide to Ravnica. That's a thing. I didn't know anything about that actually. Uh, that that's a new one. That's very like, new. Just coming out. Couple. Yeah. I saw that. I was like, really, Ravnica? And now I was just yeah. like, okay. Do you get to? Ha- do I have a deck of cards now when I play D and D? I don't know how this works. I I'm don't not care. surprised that they're they're, you know, would like to put their own version of. That kind of yeah. thing. I mean, that seems to be a really popular genre in the uh, the mobile category. I mean, Skyrim, well, not necessarily mm-hmm. Skyrim, but Elder Scrolls, they have their own card game now. I mean, mm. but the thing about it is every single one that I play is, reminds me a lot of Hearthstone. Like, yeah. I, I was potentially going to say that at one point I was going to say that earlier, but I mean, almost every single card game that i play that's mobile is in some way shape or form i mean like 50 percent minimum like just like yeah. earth then that was part of the inspiration behind being nothing like everybody else 
Yeah, uh, it does feel like, you know, there's there's a lot of iterating on a on a standard format. And chances are, if Blizzard makes something, then everybody's like, oh, we can do that, too. <laughs> let's, right. let's try to make it ourselves. I was actually surprised that, that D&D did not uh, adopt more of Magic the Gathering lore before as settings, because <laughs> it feels right. like people wanted it. But, you know, better late than never, I suppose. Now, Tyler... Let's uh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about how people are going to get a hold of this. So you have a Kickstarter coming up for this game. When is it coming out? When is it starting? Well, the Kickstarter, the Kickstarter campaign is going to begin October first, two thousand eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have a decent following accumulated on the Twitter page. We're going to be holding. Th- at least three different game giveaways mm-hmm. leading up to the Kickstarter release. Um, you will actually receive those. If you are a winner in one of these competitions, you're going to receive the game before anybody else does. You're going to get it prior to the Kickstarter release, which is pretty cool. But oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, essentially we're publishing the game through the Game Crafter, which is uh, a widely known publisher. Oh yes, up and coming, you know, <clears throat> up and coming game makers. Very good company right. to go through. Yeah, I definitely agree. But yeah, that's that's when we're going to be starting the Kickstarter October first. So sure. I mean, we're right now we're um we're pretty much building up our, our Facebook following as well. That's essentially the main places that you can find us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna have we had a website up but it's being completely revamped so it's has the promo video that you would find on kickstarter and everything mm-hmm. available just wanted to really make a top-notch product for everybody sure. to you know, consume yeah. so we're yeah. we're pretty much right at that stage where we're putting all the final pieces together before the uh before the release of the game I see. Yeah. So right now you're in a a lot of community building mode. Try to get the word out before the Kickstarter actually launches. Right. And we're going to have there's about, I would say, minimum about eight to ten well-known reviewers that I mean, Brawling Brothers, uh, Goblin Gazette. There's a lot of different well-known people in the community that Mm -hmm. are going to be covering the game. And we've requested for them to hold them. Hold the reviews yes. back until closer to the release date of the game. Right. But, I mean, there there is a lot of accumulated interest in the game, and we're just really hoping to deliver the best sure. possible product. I mean, we spent, like I said, over over four years developing this game to because, I mean, the Quaker and the Warlock decks themselves are completely opposite in the way they in the way that they work the witches being multi-layered all the different elements to the games to get them to a complete balance to a degree that 30 percent of your matches are going to come down to the last turn you Mm -hmm. know like one move could make the either one side win or the other right like it's it's pretty much about as balanced as we could possibly get it we did everything we could to bring it to this point of everything that we wanted to accomplish we feel like we did so we just really hope for a positive reviews from from the general public and hope that everybody enjoys it as much as we do uh and i know that we're talking to you like a, a couple months before this actually uh happens at at the time of this recording but do you know what your uh goal is going to be i'm gonna i think it's gonna be somewhere between five and six thousand okay that's a that's a that's a pretty reasonable goal uh that's that's that that seems very very obtainable very quickly right so and yeah i mean that's i mean that's really the intention because you mm-hmm. know if it extends beyond that then it extends beyond that right but as long as we hit that point then um we're pretty much at the point where that's like where we need to be in terms of uh right. minimum so that's right. why not set the bar there and if it goes beyond that then we'll definitely be Great. grateful <laughs> yeah uh, so basically, that's what you're going to need to actually say, yes, we can indeed produce the game for the people that have backed it. Yeah. 
Which is the best thing, because well, yes. you want the game. <laughs> yes, of course you want the game. And uh, and anything beyond that, uh, they're called stretch goals. You get stretch right. goals after that. <laughs> so that's always fun, too. Have you thought anything uh, about some of the potential stretch goals that you might be looking at? Well, I think what we're going to do for that, um, I would I would say the first stretch goal would be that each individual would receive a guidebook, which wouldn't be, you know, crazily detailed, but just uh, just something that would be because the game is a little bit more so on the complex side and than the basic side, uh, right. just a general guidebook that would potentially be something that we would want to release as one of the stretch goals. And then I'd say beyond that, I would potentially introduce I would say a, I don't want to call it a coupon, but a uh, percentage off on the the soon upcoming expansion to the game that's definitely going to be released this year. Ooh. So uh, we don't have too many, yeah, we don't have too many stretch goals. Like we haven't thought too much about that. It, more so um, just trying to get the 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 product that we've designed into into the hands of those that want to support it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, good. So uh, if I were looking to get the actual like a, a physical copy of the game, what would be the backer level, the basic backer level uh, for that? The basic backer level for that is going to be thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. That includes, you know, both decks, all the dice that are included with the game and the rule book as well. One of the levels above that is going to be a discounted price for if you want to to get multiple copies of the game. There's not going to be, with this product in particular, there's not going to be too much variance in between, you know, it's essentially the game or several copies of the game. Right. Is pretty much what it's going to be at, at least. I get you. In, in terms of, you know, just the position we're in now, that's eventually where we're at. Sure, sure, sure. So there's, there's only really a couple different uh, backer levels that you have to think about. I, I was just going to say, multiple copies are also good if you have a game store. Right. Or you have a lot of family who loves tabletop uh, card games. That is or, also true. Right. Or if you potentially, you know, have a group of friends, you know, where you, or a coven, maybe, there mm-hmm. where you want to, you know, get get a few copies for your group. It just makes sense when you look at, you know, the subject matter of the game. When you try to uh, pin down your demographic, that's something we're including as well. Right. Maybe maybe you want to play with your druid circle. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's a it's a fun activity to do. Perhaps, perhaps your tr- your tribe of werewolves. You've played way too many <laughs> druids, Alex. Just for the maybe, maybe while you're playing, maybe while you're playing the Ouija board. Yep. You can just pull these cards yep. out and be like, "Hey, let's play this while we're waiting for this spirit and, to respond." And you realize this yeah. is more fun. Hey, I do not. Yeah, I do it's... not support Ouija board. <laughs> we are not endorsing Ouija it's board. Ouija free exactly. zone, or the, or yes. the movie based upon or the, the game, or the movie, or anything associated with it. Sorry, just everyone. It's funny that you that. mentioned that. I was at one point. I was trying to think of different advertisements that I would potentially put together, and that was kind of one of them. You know, when you're when you get tired of your Ouija board, that was the <laughs> basic idea of the video. Then you were thinking, I don't want to really even mention Ouija Yeah, yeah, anyways. yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm, I don't want to associate myself. I'm already um, in a gray area with the subject matter. Right. I don't want to go down the, the other side of the other side. Fair enough, fair enough. When I actually have uh, the physical game in front of me, it will, it will have both decks in it, right? So uh, I can play yes. some, okay, so yeah, I can play with someone right out of the gate. Right. Uh, yeah. That's also good because usually if you get like magic, since we were talking about magic, you know, you can say, hey, I got my magic deck. And the other person, if they've never heard about it, you're not playing anything. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. You can play this uh, right right out of the gate. So that's great. And it's way cheaper than your magic addiction. (laughs) I don't have a problem, Alex. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I mean, $30 to get the game. Mm Mm-hmm. Versus how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars have you spent on magic? Oh, man. Well, I think I stopped after uh, Mercadian Masks 
or or no, I guess I tried some of the newer ones. It it's a lot. So lots of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. There are, well, that's, that's for each person. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually one thing that I'm glad you mentioned because a lot of different card games they introduce rarity levels mm-hmm. and that kind of thing, and it makes it into a it creates a market for the game. Uh, I strictly wanted this to be about skill in terms of the way the game is. It's not going to go down that path, basically. There's going to be an expansion pack, like I I briefly mentioned, Mm -hmm. um, in the the near future. And I'll pretty much just tell you all all about it. Um, It's going to be called Tribal Warfare, and it's going to be a a 30-card expansion. It's only 30 cards because I'm pretty much looking towards the long run where magic's at now i mean it's been going for 25 years but i feel like they've exhausted everything to the point where there's just like so many different versions of the game different types of it's just it's it's just too much and it that's how i feel about it i don't want to progress faster than i need to the smaller the smaller the better i feel like with this expansion 30 cards 15 um 15 gypsy cards 15 shaman cards those are going to be the foundation of the expansion with Mm -hmm. every expansion that comes forth with either one the shamans or the gypsies or you know what comes in the future Mm -hmm. either one can be part of either the quaker deck or the warlock deck you know it adds a lot of even more detail and possible strategies to what you were doing but the only thing is the Quakers and the Warlocks, they're always going to be completely right. separate. Like, they're the foundation. They'll always be the foundation of the each deck. Mm-hmm. But um, I feel like once once that first expansion is implemented, um, I feel like that's when people will truly be able to see the potential of the game moving forward into the, the coming years. Right, right. And it's probably important to note at this because I'm sure people who are familiar with magic are like, oh, booster sets. This is like a compose. You've you've constructed that 30 cards. So it's the same 30 cards regardless, right? Yep. Because uh, I, I, I thought to myself, oh, no, boosters. But I, I, I thought to myself, no, he didn't do that. I know he didn't no. do that. I want to get the super duper wand that's like that's like yeah. chrome plated. <laughs> I need that. That will never happen. Okay, good, good, because <laughs> that is a balancing issue right out of the. It, it's like built into the system with right. that. That it's is like, a balancing it's issue. Like selling out. It's it's like yeah. selling out basically. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to <laughs> say it, but you know, it kind of is. Are you excited to go on a on a voyage now? Right, I'm excited to go on this maiden voyage. Good. It made me think of boats, but it has nothing to do with boats. Right, right. That was the fantastic voyage you wanted to go on. Yes. But now, you're probably happy that this is the voyage you get to do. Yes, yes Okay, I very I'm, good. I'm, I'm mystified. <laughs> I see what you did there. Well, and you know what? We have Tyler Garner to thank for that. Uh, Tyler, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, and, uh, if there is a, a way for people to get more information, uh, about Maiden Voyage and about Gold Chalice Gaming, uh, where could they go? Well, you can either go to our Twitter page or our Facebook, just search Maiden Voyage and you'll be able to find us from there. You will be able to find our link to our website in which we will have plenty of material for you to view and it's all for your entertainment i hope you enjoy everything we have to present the kickstarter begins october 1st of this year and we look forward to you experiencing the game that we put together absolutely and i'll make sure to uh include some links in uh in the page description too so that you'll be able to get there uh hopefully even faster it's the magic of the internet it's internet magic. absolutely <laughs> Uh, Alex, if they wanted to find out all about the magic of Delve, where could they go? You can find the magic of Delve on the internet at www.delvecast.com. That includes everything that we do, basically. This show, other shows, all the things. Uh, And uh, when you are there, please uh, consider clicking on the little Patreon button that we have up in the corner. 
because uh, that helps us uh, keep the digital lights on. Is that what we do? Digital lights? Digital, I mean, I guess. Okay. Meta- the metaphorical lights might work better. That That is also true. I should mention that we actually do have uh, two patrons at our uh, shiny level. Did you know that, Alex? Yes, I Good. did. And uh, our two patrons at the shiny level, do you know who they are? Uh, one of them is Dominic Perry, mm-hmm. our friend from... Uh, Nine Dragons? Hong Kong is what I was thinking, but yes. And who's the other one, Nathan? Uh, that would be Bonnie Ainsworth, who is absolutely no relation to me. But uh, thank you to all of our patrons, and uh, hopefully you can become a patron too, because we have some great stuff over there, and uh, more added all the time. Uh, and also, make sure to check us out on iTunes and Google Play and all of those places. Rate and review and subscribe when you go. We always appreciate that. Helps us out greatly. And uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. And uh, Tyler, if they were headed over there toward Twitter, is there uh, a way they can contact you there? Yeah, absolutely. I made it so our profile, any any individual that visits the profile can message us. If they have any questions, concerns, comments, anything you'd like, let us know. We would look forward to hearing from you. Excellent. Uh, and so... This has uh, been uh, a voyage. Well, actually, it hasn't been Delve's maiden voyage. We've been doing this for a while. But it has been a voyage, the first voyage we've taken talking about maiden voyage. So that counts, right? That counts. It, that counts. Okay, good, good. <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, again, Tyler, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you again for having me. I do appreciate it. Oh, uh, I am uh, so glad that we got to learn all about Maiden Voyage, and uh, and hopefully the the Kickstarter gods will be very kind to you uh, when you release uh, that Kickstarter in October. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, so, hey, from all of us uh, here at Delve, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's what mm-hmm. I had to say about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I Thank I you for die, so. confirming that. Okay. I only heard one cough that whole episode. That was really good. Yeah, that's very good. You've been I, taking I, lozenges or something. I haven't. I was coughing into my... Uh, I was vampire coughing. Oh, you're vampire coughing. <laughs> coughing dust? Yeah, basically. Coughing dust. <laughs>